What's up, y'all? Trey B. Dippin' in the building. You know what time it is. I know it's been a while, man. I had to take a break uh, for multiple reasons. Mentally, physically, I needed a break. But also, I had a bunch of stuff going on in real life that just needed my undivided attention, which I'll probably get to in a different video. But while I got you here, um, we are at the infamous m and Dips, you know what I'm saying? And I just want to real quick before I get into the video, I wanted to show you guys uh, the project that I just finished because it's really dope. So let me do that and then we'll get to it. So if you guys were wondering why my name is Trey B. Dippin' and you're here for the Prelude content, just know that your boy does liquid wraps, aka Plasti Dip and Auto Flux. And this right here is a Camaro. I don't remember the year. It's a Chevy Camaro that I did in Autoflex. And what you're looking at is a custom Hypershift Pearl, which is like shifts three to four or five different colors. And I faded it to black, topped off with the gloss. I did the wheels. And if you look closer, I did the calipers too. But yeah, man. Um, this is what I do, man. This is how this is how I eat. This is how I put food on my table. Um, but I, this this project came out really dope, man. So I just wanted to show y'all that. But on to the good stuff, you know what I'm saying? So basically, we're gonna be changing out the clutch, which means you all already know your boy got the prelude. In the booth, the booth, capital B, two O's, three F's. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I already actually have a lot of stuff. I'm already like halfway done. Um, so I'm just going to walk you guys through what I've done so far. And it's not going to be like a full tutorial, but definitely like a learning moment. So um, yeah, so I, I'll walk you through what I've done so far. All right, so... Basically, the point that I'm at right now, watch out, I'm trying to step over some stuff, I'm gonna break my neck. Um, basically, the point where I'm at right now, um, I guess kind of the line of things you can do it is, number one, you wanna take off the wheels, get it up in the air, or get it up in the air, take off the wheels, um, take the axles out. Um, I do have a video on how to remove axles, so if you're not familiar with that, I do have a video for that. I'll, actually, I'll put that in the description. Um, I don't want to repeat that video basically so take out the axles um, and then once you come into the engine bay you actually want to disconnect all of the harness that's connected or all the harness connectors that's on the side of the transmission so you're looking at like two temperature sensors the distributor uh, the two distributor plugs uh, the reverse um, sensor the speed sensor and basically everything on this side um, the other thing you're going to do is uh, basically disconnect your shifter cables. Um, and then, uh, pretty much, I think the last thing on the list for inside the bay before you can actually start disconnecting the transmission is the, um, let me think, probably wanna just disconnect the VTEC uh, sensors, I already did that. And you're gonna have to disconnect your clutch line that's on top of the transmission, that needs to come off. Um, and then that's pretty much where I'm at now. I've gotten all that done. Um, and now I've started removing the bolts that actually connect the transmission to the motor. So that's where I'm at now. So that's where we're gonna finish or that's where we're going to continue rather. Now, I do wanna add that because I have so much aftermarket stuff going on in my engine bay and with my car in general, that a lot of stuff probably is gonna be missed if you have an OEM setup. Uh, like the first thing off gate that I could probably think of would be the fact that I have the traction bar instead of the OEM piece that goes there, which is called the, yeah. But yeah, man, basically, uh, I already drained the fluid out of the transmission. You don't have to do that, but it makes it for a, a less 
messy job sometimes when it's overfilled it can spill over blah 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 so i went ahead and drained the fluid um there are let me see uh there are one two three four 17 millimeter bolts holding the transmission on from this side which again i've already removed these four bolts um they're all 17 millimeters and then there is a there is another 14 mil um that holds on the starter you actually don't have to remove that that just holds the starter to the transmission so you can actually leave that um and then if we go around and underneath oh wait a minute my knees <laughs> Um, all right, so let me see if I can get some good light. But basically, from the back side, oh, along with removing the uh, the axles, you're gonna have to remove the half shaft as well. Um, so there are let me see one, two, three, four, five bolts. You got one here, here, here here and I don't know if you can see all the way up in there but let me see here and there once you get all those bolts out there will be no remaining bolts to hold the transmission in so oh, lord. oh my lord so basically um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those bolts out that I just showed you and I'll see you in the next clip. Alright, so I got all those bolts out that I showed you guys and your boy got the transmission off. You know what I'm saying? I'll be honest with you. I think this is the first time I've done a clutch with the motor in the car. I think usually I've always change the clutch as I was pulling the motor out or something of that nature so this is the first time I think I've done it I think one of the keys to the puzzle is removing this motor mount it gives you the the room to play with as far as um, kind of the wiggle room that you'll need to get the transmission off um, I use the uh, they actually sell transmission jacks um, that you can buy but I'm just using uh, a regular jack well I was using the regular jack to like kind of ease it down and you know get it into place and stuff like that but so now that uh, I got the transmission off your boys upgrading to the stage 5 so the actual clutch is still good like it hooks I mean full power it hooks the reason why I'm changing it is because my throw out bearing was going out you could hear it rattling real bad man. so um it was it was kind of irking me so i figured there's no point in just doing all this just to change the throw out bearing by itself so i figured might as well just go ahead and do the clutch while i'm at it even though this bro this amazon clutch has been putting in work this little joint right here i mean definitely worth the money spent the clutch has, I think it's five or six 10 millimeter 12 spline screws. Um, you will need a special attachment. You see how this is not a regular socket. It has like, uh, what is it, 12 splines or whatever. You will, if you are replacing the flywheel, you'll also need a 17 millimeter just like this as well. But I'm not taking my flywheel off, just taking the clutch off. So that, that'll be all I need. Ah. all right so i wasn't able to show you guys getting the transmission back on but um to be honest with you it's not easy uh it's just it's one of them things where it's really awkward and without a lift i'm assuming you're watching this video most of you are probably doing this the same way i am on jack stands no lift um they have two different types of uh transmission jacks they have floor transmission jacks for jobs like this 
and they have you know those taller ones for if you do have it on a lift um but anyway i did get everything i got the transmission back on and uh everything's pretty much hooked back up i already went ahead and threw the new axle in on this side and all the everything's pretty much put together back on this side here's the old axle i'm actually going to keep this one there's nothing wrong with it i just figured if i'm changing the other side which is blown then i might as well just change this side um <clears throat> plus i had to take it all apart anyway to get the transmission off so i figured why not um here's a comparison of the new versus the old obviously this one was the old you can see that this one's kind of bobbleheadish you know what i'm saying that boy on you don't want that boy on you know what i'm saying look at the difference you shake that it's solid so big difference this one so <laughs> quick backstory this one actually i already replaced it with a new one and i went to a track i went to the track um which you guys may or may not have seen that video yet um and i completely snapped the shaft off on the joint that i had in there so i put this old one back in there which is the exact reason why i'm keeping that one over there never know so this one will roll the car but it's not in the best condition so this is the main one or the main reason why i was replacing it in the first place so i usually use um <clears throat> honda manual transmission fluid but i think it's not as good as it used to be only because they don't make that formula now for the older cars. They make it for the newer cars, the K series and the J series. My point is, I think I'm ready to start using something else. And my boy William Allen put me onto this. Um, let me take out the bag. So my boy William put me onto this. So shout out to him. Uh, I think this is what he uses in his transmission which is basically racing transmission fluid formulated for racing and performance street applications so i was just about to say i'm not sure if this is for the street specifically but we was going to find out but it looks like it's made for both so i don't know how much better this is going to be than the uh, manual transmission fluid from honda but um if anybody's used this before put in the comments or if you use something else that you think is better than this let me know but i'm gonna try this out and see how it works should shift better and easier higher rpm so and i think it keeps the thicker viscosity once it uh heats up so we'll see how it does